Σα μπορούμε να ξεκινήσουμε, νομίζω, και να παρακαλέσω τον πρόεδρο του ΕΛΙΝΤ, τον κύριο Ματζαφού, να κάνει το χαιρετισμό. Καλησπέρα σα. Θα συνεχίσω στα αγγλικά, γιατί έχουμε ξένου εδώ. Ναι. Ωραία. Distinguished guest, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is a true pleasure for me to welcome you to the HMT LNG Institute of Marine Technology, Technical Seminar, entitled Marine LNG Prospects and Barriers. Hellenic Institute of Marine Technology is a non-profit organization which aims at transferring marine technology, knowledge and advantages to its members and the wider marine community. The objective of the seminar is to explore the technical and commercial availability of LNG, focusing on our region, the Mediterranean Sea. Today we have the pleasure to have to our panel key players of the LNG sector in Greece who will try to cover all aspects related to LNG as fuel. Furthermore, we will also get insight into the practical side of building an LNG fuel vessels and as such we will have two distinguished speakers from two shipping companies to share with us their experience. I wish you a most fruitful seminar with interesting and uh, stimulating discussion and exchange of knowledge so that we can emphasize the future of an innovate a uh, sustainable shipping. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to call to um, the post, Mr. Bulugouris, Dr. Bulugouris. Dr. Bulugouris is a leader of safety of marine operations and deputy director of the Maritime Safety Research Center at the University of Strathclyde. He uh, holds a PhD as a naval architect and then marine engineer from NTUA Greece. Has produced more than 110 publications in journals and, uh, of course, conferences and international peer review conferences, and uh, has done a lot of research. So, uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Bulugouris' uh, subject is LNG fuel ships, challenges and opportunities. Mr. Bulugouris, please. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to address uh, uh, this audience in. Uh, very successful exhibition as this one is this year. So this will be uh, the content, oh, sorry, uh, let's go here. <laughs> Yeah, the contents of my presentation. Uh, I will, as a first speaker, I will elaborate a little bit about LNG, then why we consider this as a marine uh, fuel, the challenges which uh, are posed by its use, the opportunities on the other side which uh, uh, are, we, uh, we have with uh, LNG, the main considerations and uh, the research which we are doing in uh, Strathclyde, in the University of Strathclyde in the Marine uh, Time Safety Research Center. And then I will, uh, if there is time, I will conclude with some success stories with, uh, which pave the way for the introduction of LNG fuel ships. So, uh, we have in general two types of uh, liquid gas. We have the LPG and we have the LNG. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, let's say the LPG is mainly propane and butane. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the actual um, properties as a chemical. And on the other hand, the LNG, which uh, we will consider here, uh, is mainly methane and it liquefies at minus 162.5 uh, Celsius. Uh, this is the energy density and we will see why this is important. And uh, the uh, gas is lighter than air when it uh, uh, reaches a temperature of minus 100 uh, Celsius and it's flammable. We will see uh, when. Uh, 
if uh, we have a concentration of 5 to 15 percent. Uh, it's flash point and it's uh, auto ignition temperature is uh, 595, it's almost uh, 600 degrees. Uh, it's uh, relatively difficult to ignite. Uh, on, this is something that we do not, let's say, easily understand. Uh, but there have been stories which, uh, uh, let's say, back in the Iran-Iraq uh, war, back in the 80s, RPGs were fired into a, a, a tank full of LNG and it they never erupted, it never ignited. So. Uh, this is the uh, the content which uh, the LNG will have. Obviously, it depends on where it comes from, and this is one of the challenges which we have. And uh, we consider that the introduction of LNG is the uh, big change which we have. Uh, the, the previous step change was 100 years ago uh, when we moved from coal to oil. And the LNG, uh, we consider that this is the bi next big thing until we will go to something which is not a, a, a fossil uh, fuel. So, do we have enough gas? Uh, we have uh, enough gas and you can see here which are the oil and gas produ uh, uh, countries, pr uh, producing countries, and you can see that we have a lot of reserves and enough uh, capacity to produce uh, gas uh, for our industry. Of course, uh, if you compare this to this uh, pie, you will see that there is a different distribution of the exports uh, in uh, a million of tons uh, per year. And you see Qatar and Australia and Malaysia and Nigeria and Indonesia and of course for Europe, Algeria are the main players. So, is the price good? So that's the next uh, question which we have when we consider a fuel. This is uh, the uh, fluctuation of the price. You see here, this is after the collapse of the oil price back in 2014. Uh, here, this is the price which we have when we import natural gas in Europe. So it's around uh, 7.2 uh, 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 US dollars per uh, MMBTU. So this is the thermal capacity which we have. Uh, is it new to shipping? Do we need new, is it something which introduces unknowns? No, because the last uh, 70 years we have been playing with LNG already. You see back in the 50s we started and by 1964 LR had classed already to 27,000 cubic meters uh, ships. So uh, we know a lot about LNG. Uh, the the uh, important thing is whether we need to resize the vessel, change its main dimensions in order to accommodate LNG. And this is uh, what the uh, numbers indicate. So the energy content is higher. You see LNG, MDO and uh, heavy fuel. Heavy fuel is a champion which we have in our industry and we see that the content per metric ton is higher. But on the other hand the density is lower and in that respect if we have one tank which is designed for HFO, then we will need almost twice this size in order to have the same, uh, let's say, uh, range with LNG. On the other hand, if we consider MDO, which is much better when it comes to sulfur content, uh, the size, the increase is 175%. So. Then the main driver, as we will see later on, is legislation. And mainly the uh, uh, LNG is a winner when it comes to CO2. And you can see from this, uh, the uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, how much you, we win by LNG. This is a graph produced by the NVGL uh, in a very recent report, which was published this June. You can see that we have many different alternatives, and you can see that when we consider not only the 
tank to propeller on board the, the vessel, but the whole cycle from the well to the tank, uh, then we see that the LNG is uh, very good. Of course, we have, let's say, the best, the golden grail for when it comes to CO2 is uh, using hydrogen, which has been produced by renewables. Then the Norwegian, let's say, solution is the best when it comes to zero CO2 emissions. So if we would like to get together all the challenges which we are facing with LNG, then this is uh, the main key points. Uh, individual projects may have faced different problems, but uh, the main problem is the, what kind of uh, composition do we have in our fuel, which uh, will uh, vary depending on where it, was, uh, it comes from, uh, how long it was stored, and then uh, we need to consider that this is a cryogenic, so the temperatures are, let's say, very harmful for any human to be close. Uh, the limited supply on the market right now in various ports, the large storage, uh, larger storage requirement on board the vessel, the higher capital investment, which is, uh, let's say, something that the owner needs to consider before investing, and uh, the uh, safety uh, procedures, which need to be in place, uh, and the higher training requirements for the crew, which are associated with this safety. But we have opportunities uh, which uh, stem from the emission control regulations because uh, the whole world now with IMO and uh, the UN is trying to reduce the CO2. And we have the future supply which uh, is there and we, have, we are not using gas as efficiently as we should. The fuel prices, the gap which we will see is in favor of uh, LNG and as the oil price uh, goes higher and higher, uh, this gap is in favor of uh, changing to LNG. The maintenance cost, because we have a, clear, a more clear engine when it comes to dual fuel, and the environmental friendly uh, characteristics. The regulations, obviously, is MARPOL. Uh, due to the fact that 90% of the trade comes by the sea and the importance for the global markets, uh, the uh, the contribution of shipping to international trade and the transport is important. And when the MARPOL introduced the uh, new ECA areas uh, back in 2008, uh, this uh, actually created the requirement for uh, fuels which are more environmental friendly. These are the areas which we have. We have uh, ECA areas, SECA areas, and uh, NECA areas around the world. And there are a number of areas, which we will see later on, which are going to be introduced. So if you operate inside an ECA area, it, it makes sense to uh, invest in LNG already. If you operate outside an ECA area, it depends on how long do you spend inside in order to make this profitable for you. Uh, this is a roadmap from uh, for, uh, now on. Uh, the key dates here uh, and, let's say, some unknowns which we have. And all these are going to accelerate the uh, opportunities uh, which arise from LNG. So, uh, what kind of uh, strategies do we have alternative to LNG? You can see here uh, in this map we have, uh, depending on what kind of cycle the engine uses, diesel or auto, the SOX, NOX and CO2, which are the three, uh, let's say, gases which are emitted, and uh, CO2 is not, a, let's say, a polluting, but we need to reduce this as is a, a greenhouse gas, uh, we need to to take into consideration, you see that with LNG everything is much more positive compared to HFO, low sulfur HFO or MGO. So that's why we suggest that this is, uh, let's say, one. Uh, there is an opportunity. We can see here the prices, which are uh, these are going to prove the sustainability of such a project and whether LNG is going to be. Feasible. You can see here, compared to uh, IFO, MGO, the gas is uh, cheaper, especially these are the prices which we had in mid-January um, this year. And 
and this is the uh, uh, the fleet which uh, has already invested. You see that the car carriers uh, here, car passenger carriers, PSVs are the winners, and uh, there is a lot of investment in the north uh, of Europe uh, in this kind of ships. But we start seeing other projects, tankers, bulk carriers here, and we will see one project which we have done. Uh, uh, as of first of March, we have 121 LNG fuel ships in operation and we have 127 new build orders so the fleet is increasing fast. The standards which we need to consider are here, uh, which uh, these are enabling technologies. We have the standards here, we have the uh, IGF code, we have the IGC code, the ISO, uh, the classification societies are, are ready, all, uh, so the designer can comply with the building requirements, and we have guidance from various organizations. Uh, the considerations which the designer needs uh, to take on board when uh, designing an L LNG fuel ships are listed here. Uh, you see we need uh, structural reinforcements, uh, the storage tanks are uh, let's say one requirement, a fuel gas bunkering system, how do we bunker this ship, this is uh, important for uh, safety, uh, the supply system, vapor handling system, consumers on board, uh, the hose handling crane if we need one, uh, the pumping of LNG using uh, pressure instead of pumps, which uh, we need to consider, fire protection, control and monitoring, LNG tank design review at the end. And the other thing is crew uh, training. So we need, uh, we have a number of concerns which uh, are, uh, have been already outlined in the industry. Uh, the, we have the LNG which uh, has a very low temperature and uh, uh, a small incident could escalate very quickly. We have the familiarity with uh, the operations or the lack of it from the crew. The specialist skills uh, which are required the higher risk, especially during the bunker operation, and uh, we need uh, proper training in order to uh, allow the crew to work with LNG. Uh, these are some projects which we are uh, we have worked in our uh, university in the, our department. The LNG uh, Comship, which was uh, actually started in uh, here in the University of West of Attica, it, it was called the Athens with uh, my colleague Dr. Theotokatos, uh, which uh, was a study for converting one double-ended ferry for the L usage of LNG. We uh, his team in uh, um, MS. SRC is doing also now CFD analysis of marine diesel fuel engines. Uh, the, we have uh, modeling techniques for state of the art, uh, st steady state and transit st through state of the art uh, technologies. Uh, an example is shown here. Uh, we optimize uh, marine engines and systems here and we uh, do parametric investigation and optimization. This is a publication which you can uh, find more details about uh, this work and we are also looking at the sustainability and enhancement of uh, systems LNG and the comparison of various technologies and when and under which conditions somebody should invest in LNG. Uh, we have done a number of studies for uh, various uh, ship owners and various sizes. These are uh, two examples from uh, for uh, uh, dry cargo pa uh, Panamax bulk carrier. In this case, these are the uh, let's say the main particulars. This was a study uh, conducted during an MSc uh, uh, thesis, and you see the cost, the payback time with the data we used back in 2014, if I recall correctly, uh, how it is reduced depending on how long do you spend inside an ECA area, so depending on where you operate, yes. Uh, this is a conversion of uh, a two uh, very large uh, uh, bulk carrier. Uh, we had uh, from the, the shipping company details about the, uh, the route and we conducted a full analysis, techno-economic analysis and structural analysis in order to make sure that the uh, loads of the location of 
uh, the tank is sufficient in order to withstand uh, the uh, additional load. So for very large uh, vessels, uh, probably we won't have any structural issues as we've seen in this case. And then training, we had a, a project which was uh, on the Mosway network and we developed a number of modules which are available online and you can visit in order to see the design of uh, ships, LNG fuel ships and uh, the, uh, there are videos which you can download. Um, also we had another train MOS project which uh, was uh, uh, organized with a number of other universities around Europe and we tackled the problem of logistics and training for uh, a, an MSc in uh, this uh, field. Some success stories, the Viking race is the most well known, but now we have with RCCL, uh, RCCL is one of the two founders of our, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sponsors of our uh, center. Uh, RCCL is already working for the first very large cruise uh, ship which will have LNG on board, among other technologies in order to reduce the resistance and the power requirement. And this is the, the Scottish success story, which is a vessel, the Calmac vessel, which was launched uh, last uh, November. You can see here, this is an LNG a Ropax vessel with uh, these uh, parameters. And, and this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.